What's up, everybody? Happy Saturday. Happy 420. Happy 609 p.m. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how happy you are if you were sitting out there through, you know, the spring showcase. Uh, you know, those things tend to be a little boring in person. They tend to be a little boring to watch on TV. But it's great to have Florida State back on the television or back into Campbell Stadium uh, and to be able to enjoy that because... I guess we, well, we've got about four months until we get to see it again. It's been a month, you know, about two months or so since we saw them last. And the last taste in all of our mouths was the screw job. So it's nice to, um, it's nice to, you know, see them out there, see what the team's going to, what the, what they kind of got going on, what they're going to look like potentially and, and get a sense of just where things are at this, um, at this flagpole of the off season. So I think there's going to be some hot takes that come away from, this spring showcase, I'm not going to call it a game because it certainly wasn't a game uh, under the, in the Mike Norvell era. It has never been a game. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll refer to it as a showcase. They refer to it as a showcase because Mike wants to treat it as a practice. He wants to use it as one of his um, days to go out there and, and do all aspects of a practice and, and, and get that work in. So I want to start with thanking everybody for jumping in here we're right up at 155 people 160 people uh please be sure to hit the like button um this will be dropping on the uh those 24 7 on the bench podcast feed um so you can find that it'll be up a little later tonight if you're driving home and you only get bits and pieces of this and you want to listen to the rest of it um be sure to get over to Knowles 24 7 there'll be a boatload of post uh post showcase coverage recruiting coverage all that hoopla um you know but it's the good stuff it's we're all the fanatics we're all in here because we're fanatical about this program and you know it's the that's the lifeblood so be sure to get over check out what zach scott dane clay brendan chris um i'm sure they're gonna have a ton of great stuff just a bit of housekeeping we will be doing the film review uh tuesday so look for that um it, it, uh, upcoming that will be out on the X's and O's YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. Give that a like. If you're not subscribed, get subscribed there. Um, obviously, we've got no Noti Gang in the building here, 200, up to over 230 people, 240 people. So Trey's in Chicago or some madness at a Cubs game. He'll be back with us on Tuesday for that. Um, all right, Kev, let's get into it. Yeah. I didn't text a whole lot. You were there. I was watching it on TV with – with a six-year-old and a four-year-old running around like madmen because four o'clock are not great times in the Brown household. But um, let's give me your thoughts. What did you think? Yeah, I, I guess we can go position by position. So uh, let, let's let's start with quarterback. I think I think that's a natural place to go, um, and then we'll kind of give our overarching thoughts on 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 the units as a whole. Now after we process kind of individual stuff, so start with DJ. Um, I, I thought he I, he looked like DJ. You know, we, we've seen this kid play four years of college football. He's He's been around. He's the kind of guy where he's going to make a throw or two a game where you're just like, dang, I don't think there's too many people in college football that can make that throw. And then he's going to make a couple throws like the one on the sprint out to um, where where he just kind of missed a wide open guy. He just kind of dirted. Um, dirted mm -hmm. a throw. He, yeah. he made up for it with the next throw, but you know, he, he's, he's just that kind of guy where I think you're going to get the occasional inconsistent throws, but he's got such good arm strength. I thought that it did a good job of kind of stretching the ball down the field for him mm -hmm. and kind of getting him on these play actions, these, these kind of longer crossers, like we talked about. Yep. Um, and that's what you're going to do. I, I think you're going to get 50% completion out of him, 50 to 60% completion out of him, regardless if you're throwing at five to 10 yards or 15 to 30 yards. So you might as well throw it 15 to 30 yards. <laughs> yeah. I, um, cl clearly, I, I think the biggest thing that people are going to take away from this or, or discuss about this, um, is a wide receiver position. Um, yeah. We were discussing it a little bit beforehand when we were talking to each other about remembering that it is a practice and there should be no grand takeaways, but grand takeaways are going to come. Hot takes are going to, are going to fly after this. I'm sure they're all over uh, Twitter, just <laughs> bashing yeah. away. So 
and the Miami fans are going to be writing up uh, little posts on their boards talking about <laughs> just like you did. So yeah, um, that'd be great. The wide receiver position, there were some drops, and there's been drops throughout spring. We knew that this was a problem. Brendan has certainly highlighted it uh, in his um, post-practice write-ups that he's done, and I know other places have as well. Malik Benson looked like the only guy that could line up and play wide receiver for you. Um, Ja'Kai Douglas looked level. okay. Yeah, they didn't use him necessarily. And we know that LT and Jalen Lucas are guys that they see as like wide receivers slash uh, running back. So those are guys that are going to get involved. Um, but Kentron makes one back shoulder throw that, or one back shoulder catch that, I mean, that's what he's always been able to do. But other than that, I just didn't see a whole lot. Darian Williamson, he put a couple on the ground. There, there looked to me like, some guys that don't know how to handle the velocity of the ball that's coming out of DJ's hands. Um, I mean, I don't ever remember Darion Williamson having trouble dropping the ball in the past, and now all of a sudden it is. I think that there's some correlation there. So that's my opinion. Um, yeah, it's a we'll different ball. That, it's a different velocity. It's a different there's arm different, angle coming there's at a different you. Spin, there's a different spin on the ball. There, there's a lot going on there for that relationship passer to pass catcher um that they clearly need to iron out um i think right now it would behoove them to go get one i wouldn't be a poll i wouldn't be mad at them if they went and got two um i I, it looks like a clear weakness right now um yeah i I think you needed benson you need benson to be the guy and he looked like a little bit of the guy Right, he's got the speed. He's he's a good route runner. Um, uh, he he goes down with an injury. We don't know what mm-hmm. that is. Um, yeah, look, it looked like an ankle. Destin Hill was poised to to kind of have a season this year. He's we we're obviously not seeing him. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it, it didn't look like people were getting open, and the, and the defense yeah. wasn't doing anything particularly mm-hmm. interesting. They were playing they were a lot of like man crazy. coverage. They were being very aggressive. I think very, that's something. Very. There was there were several several plays that could have been pass interferences that weren't called, which so advantage defense. Um, so we got to take that into account. Yeah. Um, but I, I think the natural question is uh, what, what DB brings up here. Where is Hakeem um, where this five-star guy, um, where is he at? What's, what's going on with him? Why is he not standing out in this field of receivers? That seems like, mm-hmm there's room for him to stand out. Yeah. And and for those of that maybe don't know, um, we're talking about five-star wide receiver, Hakeem Williams, who was a true sophomore this year. Um, I, you know, he lost a lot of time at the end of the year, second half of the year, uh, after that Duke game when he got hurt. Um, and he was in and out kind of getting up to speed before that. He looks like a million bucks running around out there. (laughs) <laughs> it didn't seem like there was a lot of opportunities to play him today. Um, he had one, he had one 50, 50 ball go his way that I'm just thinking of off the top of my head. And we'll cover this a lot more in the film review, but one 50, 50 ball that was not even close, but he wasn't open. Um, yeah. See, uh, DB brings up, uh, Jericho Kotcher is a friend of his talking about Cam Cam Newton how hard he threw the ball. It, it's an issue. And you can tell there's some guys that were fighting it. Um, I thought the, I thought the one slant to what was a Darion. It looked like, uh, I mean, it just looked like he dropped it because he couldn't handle it uh, more than yeah. anything. And, yeah, we, and know the, that, we know that JT being threw handy. a catchable ball. JT threw a very soft catchable ball. Um, he could, he could velo it when he needed to, but he's not coming close to what DJ can do. But on Hakeem, I mean, look, he's got four months to, get himself going here. And it sounds like I was listening to Ingram on the Noel cast. Shout out to Bud and Ingram um, for all the work that they do. And obviously Ingram with the battle's end. Um, he was talking about, you know, there's some things, some plans for Hakeem for this off season, going out and working with some different people uh, in, in Tallahassee and then away from Tallahassee. So it seems like there is a plan for him for the remainder of the off season. And obviously he's got to go capitalize on that. Um, there's a spot there for him. He's a physical freak. 
I think you can game plan him. We know how athletic he is. Um, we'll see. I, I think I think to be fair to to all the receivers today, the defense clearly knows the tells on the screens. Yeah. So they were blowing those screens up. That, that's a good opportunity. I mean, you saw it with Hakeem last year where yeah. he's an athletic guy. He's someone you want to get the ball in the hands of. Uh, Jalen Brown, that's another guy who who might be a menace mm-hmm. on screens. Darren mm-hmm. Williamson a couple of years ago, Boston College had like 200 yards on screens. So like th- they were taking away something that, a, a normal team isn't going to be able to cheat on that like that. Um, I mean, it was all press man coverage and you weren't running any man beaters out there. I mean, yeah, they had like one switch play. They were kind of doing yeah. with mm-hmm. like a little post and a wheel behind it. And they hit, they hit, uh, was it Benson? I think on that one, it was a, sl- it was a little under slant or a little, um, a little whip that worked its way in more than anything. You couldn't see the camera angle was terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, that went for good yardage. Um, but yeah, there wasn't, I mean, you didn't see any mesh or anything like that, where you were working things to try to run some rubs and picks to try to get guys open. And I hate to break it to a lot of people. And there's going to, again, I said, there's going to be a lot of hot takes and a lot of venom fired at the wide receiver core. And we'll do our fair share of that. Um, this may be the best defensive back group nationally. Yeah. um, At least in the ACC top five. That's you're going to see in the ACC this year. Um, so, I mean, you've got you've got to remember that when you're evaluating dudes, because uh, they, they, you're a lot of people are gonna have trouble getting open against AZ and Fentrell and Earl Little. Those let's just transition to that. Um, those dudes look like <laughs> absolute monsters. They do, and th- they were allowed to get a little handsier. Um, yeah. Like there was one play done by Kai Bates that was a pass breakup where he just straight grabbed the dude's hips. Um, yeah. But no, they're they're long, they're athletic, they move well. Yeah, I mean, you're, you've got like a couple of guys that are borderline five star freshmen who are like third string corners for you right now. Right. Um, I mean, I don't. We'll see whether he's going to stay. I know Brendan. I think put out some tea that uh, Edwin Joseph was a guy that maybe has. There's been some frustration and potentially like a portal guy. I believe. It was yeah, but the guys we have, we, there's there's plenty of there's plenty of Edwin Joseph is like he's like third string and he looks like a freaking animal out there, like an yeah. absolute demon. So I mean, they are there is depth, there is numbers, and there is athleticism just pouring out of that room right now. Um, guys that can just get up in your face and be physical and be and and shut a wide receiver group down. Um, I, I like Grant's comment there. I'll put it back up for those who are listening on the podcast side of this. Um, Grant Island, I hope I said your last name right, said, I'm glad we went vertical instead of stat padding, check downs like the boys down south. That always jumps out to me. Um, I saw Arch Manning's numbers got posted or something like that. It was like 90%, 85% completion percentage, and like <laughs> 345 yards. It's like, eh, all right. Uh, I want to watch it. I mean, we watched the Miami one, and not to talk Miami, like, I don't think Cam Ward completed a ball past 10, 12 yards. So and I'm sure there was some, and I'm not remembering it. I'll get called out for that. And that's okay. But 90% of those completions were like two yards past the line of scrimmage. So, but you're also showing off, you're trying to show off who you are. And mm-hmm. I mean, Cam Ward's going to be a guy, Miami, because of how they're built, they're going to be a team that completes short passes. They're going to have to be a success rate focused team. That's who he is. Yeah. DJ's the opposite. He's someone who's going to have to push the ball downfield if you're going to want to be successful. Look at Oregon State. I'm going to do breakdowns of Oregon State's offense from last year throughout the summer. They're, they're a team that found success with him by pushing the ball downfield, and that's what FSU did. And I, I think you were hoping that Malik Benson and Jalen Brown are these guys that get open downfield. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, I, I think FSU's defense is built to take that away. <laughs> so I think like, so, too. When we, yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I don't think you're putting them on display in this game. Like you will be able to when you're starting to scheme things open uh, during an a, an actual game. Um, yeah, you would. You're, you're running, only hoping to hit two or three of those in an actual game. Um, yeah, and, and you're going to get a hell of a lot more chances at it. So Jonathan asks, "Is it normal for wide receivers?" I I did want to touch on that. Um, Malik got hurt because he was pussyfooting around. Frankly, um, I think he would probably agree with that, and I think the, the coaches will say that. He kind of got stuck and he wasn't sure whether to go block or not block. And 
he got rolled up on. If he would have been aggressive and would have been uh, challenging the the DB, I believe it was that that was in front of him instead of catching, um, I think he drives that out of there and probably doesn't end up getting hurt. It's unfortunate. We'll see how severe it is. I know the cart came out, but he was kind of walking around on it, which would maybe lean to not being a break. I would, if I had to guess, and I'm not gonna guess, but I will guess. It's probably some sort of like high ankle just from what it looked like on TV, but they'll get a look at you got four months to get him healthy. Um, I'm not too, too worried about it. Yeah. But uh, to, to not belabor the wide receiver point, I, I think that we don't want to take too much. I think the DB's got a lot of ground. They're very good. That's a very good corner room, but I, I think we can all agree that that might be the most pressing need getting a number, a number one receiver that can, just win one on ones, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, and you're probably not going to find that, but you got to you better find somebody that can go get open a little bit. Uh, yeah, I think that that is a need. Um, if you had to put a grade on DJ's day, what would it be? Uh you know, B. I'd probably say somewhere in that range, B plus. You know, I I think that there were things that. Uh, you would fix and and you want to fix, but I think at a certain point he is what he is. Uh, you yeah. want to limit, limit the kind of mistakes that he might make limit yeah. turnovers. Like Oregon state did a really good job of doing last year. He, I don't, he didn't throw a pick, did he? Um, so no, he had one that should have gotten picked and got dropped. Stream keeps lagging. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I mean, would you agree with that s- sentiment? Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, he regressed. I thought, he, I think he reverts back to some bad habits. Yeah. Feet go dead a little bit and he doesn't work through, doesn't work through his uh, progressions all the time. When he does, it looks really good. Um, obviously the ability to throw the ball at any point of the field is, is incredible. Um, and he does that as good as anybody. Um, I thought he handled the pocket pretty well. There were some times that were, some, there was some collapsing pressure in his face, but I thought he did pretty good handling that and standing there and being poisoned in a day where he wasn't really allowed to run at all. Yeah. Um, and you, and you were obviously weren't going to use his threat of running the um, yeah. King said easy dropped on an easy pick. I didn't think it was easy, but he did drop it. He should probably should have had it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. DJ, he had that one it looked like slow mesh, but it wasn't. They had the RPO out, out the other side um, on the touchdown to, I believe it was Roy Dell uh, really stood in there and, and, and stayed in with the ride and they got the, they got the long touchdown run off of, um, I, it felt like watching Oregon state, but from shotgun, not necessarily under center today. It was really, it was really decisive. It was crossing routes, you know, deep crossers, that kind of stuff, stuff that was developing. That's going to take some time for the, and we're going to transition here to the offensive line stuff. That's going to take some time for the offensive line to hold up, uh, against a pass rush. Um, you were throwing some hot fire at Jeremiah Byers. I know you're not the only one. Again, I want I want to go back and rewatch him. Yeah, we need I, to. I spent a lot of my time watching DJ today. In fairness, um, yeah. So before we get too far off that topic, right. I, I do have some like rudimentary data. You, you can't take this for too much, but on the season on run plays, Florida State last year averaged about 34 percent counter and 20 percent outside zone. I think they ran one counter run today. They ran several. Um, yeah. So it, it the 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 percentages were flipped. So we're looking at thirty three percent outside zone and closer to twenty seven percent counter. Mm-hmm. So um, I, it's not a concrete number and it's a very small sample size. But I, th- I think our eyes saw it right. They they yeah. were running a lot more outside zone, running a mm-hmm. lot more inside zone. I mean, the inside zone doubled what they normally do. Um, slash duo you know so i i think i think you saw that, that, that they're going to be a little bit more of a zone team and, and what that does by doing those outside zone is you know faking outside zone and going on a boot that naturally buys you more time as a quarterback yeah. you don't have to pass set as an offensive lineman and uh so like it, it buys times for those receivers to get out the field and yeah. for you to for dj to throw off his show off his arm um yeah. And yeah, I think visually we were able to see that there's some stats to kind of back that up, but we won't really mm-hmm. see until kind of mm-hmm. the season start, starts, obviously. Right. Um, yeah, it's a good point. I mean, they they did some 
They did some of the RPO. They did some of the triple option stuff that we've seen from Mike in the past. Like the offense isn't going to change. They're going to do the things that Mike yep. believes in and what are his bread and butter, but they're going to tailor them the best they can to. There's the hurricane fans. Oh boy, there they are. Don't, don't let them trigger up, you. Maybe. Showing up loud and proud. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I, I thought DJ played well for the most part. I thought they put him in positions to show his arm talent off. Unfortunately, some wide receivers put the ball on the ground and they've got to do a better job of that. That's something they've got to get fixed. Um, yeah. so yeah, transitioning the offensive line. Um, I thought it was a mixed bag early. Like, look, I'm going to wear this one because I wasn't sure. And I, I'm not, I'm not alone in this, the Marvin Jones, like, I, I didn't know what to expect. Like I was excited that they got him. I was trying to to temper jump into Marvin Jones. <laughs> well, I am because I mean the first three plays, he just was he looked like a freaking monster. He um, looks like a monster. He looks athletic. He moves yeah. well in space. He almost got that pick. They did a little Yeah, that fire zone was that was hot fire. Yeah, yeah where he dropped in four, space underneath that. Adam Floors running fire zones in a scrim in a spring scrimmage or something. And he he looked Showcase good dropping yeah, in space I wish yeah. He, yeah i wish he would if he'd have picked that it was going to, it was going to get housed and that would have been fun um so and now now you got me all off track thinking about marvin picking that thing and taking it to the house all right so the offensive line like i thought buyers had some weak moments today which were what he had last year um yeah but i also thought there were times where he was fine and again i want to the offensive line is one you always got to rewatch before you can make any like grand statements. Yeah, definitely. Moe's Mo. Yeah, you didn't get Ferguson and Leonard together a whole lot. Um, and I know, I don't think Richie, he saw, I saw Richie with ice on his shoulder. So I'm not sure what, what the deal is there. Um, Darius is an all conference left tackle. Um, he's, yeah. he's a good, good football player that you're going to be able to rely on. Like, I don't think you saw what this offensive line is going to look like come fall time when they're game planning and doing the things that they know that they do best. Watching them today, I I, I think we maybe are going to see more counter than what we originally have thought. Um, there's athleticism there, but there's some freaking people movers. Um, yeah. There's some dudes that they got size, and size to me tends to think gap schemes and – well, they broke they broke one or two off duo, you know, essentially inside zone. Um, yep. where you know there there's that one touchdown. Um, I think it was Roydell. Um, mm-hmm. but uh, where where essentially one of the linebackers filled the wrong gap, but yeah, Omar Graham. Because you okay. know, because your offensive line is is moving, is displacing the defensive tackles, that muddies reads for linebackers. You're gonna yeah. see more and more of that. Um, yep. you force their hands. Um, yeah counter or sorry counter inside zone um yeah i i think that's what you have to do you have to you have to be able to run the football yeah with with how you're trying to set up dj to hit these shots Mm -hmm. and i thought they they did a fairly decent job running the ball yeah i mean lt had an early touchdown sean murphy just whiffed in space he kind of gave him a little gave him a little dead leg and and ran away from him I thought Roydell looked really good. LT and Roydell looked like a, a dynamite duo there. Uh, yeah, the and then Kaziah has a third down back kind of situation. Yeah, Kaziah, um, you know, they put the ball on the ground a couple times, which is something I expect them to get worked out. I don't think that'll yeah. be an issue. But, uh, you know, and then Jalen Lucas is like a change of pace, you know, just shot out of a cannon little, yeah, he's, little cat back. He's, he's fun. And fun they use him. Around. They used him as a running back today. They did. They, they did. And I expect, I mean, I think they're going to, but uh, I just think you're going to see him start to move around as you get into game plans and they try to start finding matchups because that's what Mike does. Um, that backfield looks exciting. Uh, I'm encouraged by what you see there. And I think it's going to be a strength for your offense and it's going yeah. to need to be. Um, but I was really p- pleased with what I saw at a Roydell. He looks like a guy that I think you go out there and give 25 carries to and, and be happy with the production you're going to get. Um, yeah. He did a nice job in, in, in on the inside, jump cuts, reading, uh, making guys miss in, in, in a phone booth, and then coming out the other side and making plays. Um, so that was exciting. I'm seeing some folks talk about the tight end room. Yeah. I'm going to – we'll see. 
Uh, yeah, cool. we saw some flashes out of Jackson West that he can he can provide you something. Yeah, but he fights the hell out of the ball. Like none of those catches were clean. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, he's not going to be Brock Bowers, but I, I think he's going to give you snaps. He's going to be adequate. Um, didn't see much out of Morlock today. No. Um, yeah, this so we're, we're rounding out the the offense. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is this offense worse or better than last year based off from, this game? From AB? Glee Boy. What? From Glee Boy. From Remember, Glee Boy. It's going to be on, on audio, too. What's your answer? Uh, it's worse. Yeah. It's worse at this point. Um, it's worse solely because of the of the wide receiver room. And you didn't get any better at tight end. Um, I don't – Kyle Morlock doesn't look any different to me than he did the, to, to finish last year, and that's – a little frustrating because I think you were banking on him taking a step and you know, it, it can happen in the next four months, but I didn't see anything today that said to me, Oh, this is a player. Um, and I want to watch him again, blocking and that kind of stuff, but it just didn't never jumped off, n- never jumped off the screen to me. Jackson is Jackson. Um, we've always been high on him. I mean, we were high on him when he came out of high school. I certainly was. Uh, and I think he's a guy that's going to get in there and give you some tough blocks um, I think there was one. I think people are going to be like, "Oh, he hung DJ out to dry." It looked like Blake Nicholson knew the play and kind of cheated on it. So, um, but I think Jackson's tough. I mean, he's going to block. He's going to fight for every inch that he that he needs. Um, but again, it just—I uh, don't think there's a dynamic element there. We didn't get to see a ton of Landon Thomas being a playmaker. Brian Courtney just kind of is what he is. He's a good athlete, but. You can't put his hand in the dirt and ask him to block in the box. I don't think you're going to play a ton of 12 this year from what it looks like. They played uh, the occasional 12, but um, yeah. Okay. So, so I would go get a tight end. I think it's holding you back slightly right now, but I mean, it's way behind what, what's holding you back a wide receiver. So what, yeah. it, for me, it's worse. What about you? Yeah, I, I think it's worse. Um, just in the sense that I, I think you got to see a little bit today. I, people took, JT for granted, I think, um, are, are currently taking JT for granted. Essentially. Uh, He was, he was pretty darn good on third downs. Even last year, he was a guy where if you got into obvious passing situations by the, in the past two years, he could, he could get you out of them more often than not. Mm -hmm. I don't think DJ's that guy. I don't think DJ's that the kind of guy you want to be back there necessarily on a third and long, um, He's the kind of guy where if you can get ahead of the chains on first and second down, you can have a successful run game. He can hit you some shot plays and win you a lot of games. Um, But against good football teams, against good defenses, you might run into situations like you saw today where they, they weren't having a lot of success running the football. Um, They, they had some explosives, but Mm -hmm. you know, there was, they, they were quite a few second and third and longs were, you had to go to more of a traditional uh, drop back passing game. And, you know, I, I, I don't think that's his strength, Um, but I I think he's going to be someone like, I don't think this is a bad offense. I just, I think that you're missing the, the kind of the, the star power of Jordan Travis and, you know, Keon Coleman hitting Mm -hmm. those plays and, and being people that can win one-on-ones when you needed them. Yeah. And and I think we've said from the get go that like, you were never replacing those guys, but what you hoping that you lost and their star power you were making up with in your run game coming back to you needs to the run game yeah. was a disappointment last year, and you're hoping that you can get back to the like the twenty two level of running game at the least, and it opens up your explosive your explosive nature yep. when you're passing game. So. Let's transition to defense. Let's talk defensive line. Let's pick up the pace a little bit because we're 30 minutes. Um, yeah. yeah. So defensive line, all in all, the ends look good. I thought Sione got got driven down inside a few times, but they moved they moved him all over the place. Tomiwa was pretty much all three tech the whole game. Yeah, that's um, the just, way it's looking. He's going to be a tackle. Yeah. yeah, we've known that. Um, but it's, you know, we try to not to put that stuff – that kind of stuff out there too much, but uh, so he's been a three tech. I still would go get another end, um, in my opinion, and I go get another defensive tackle because, uh, like, I, and he, Clay Clay DM me last night and was like, "Yeah, I, I know we hyped up Grady Kelly. It's come back to earth a little bit." <laughs> yeah, he flashed, he flashed a little bit. 
he flashed a little bit, but I don't, he's a guy that I think you're going to rely on for 250, 350 snaps and not a whole yep. lot more than that. I don't, you know, he's, they're he's not your Malcolm be, Ray this year. Yeah. They're not going to be elite snaps. They're going to just be good, solid snaps. So, but you might have the best DN tandem uh, in the conference. And maybe, maybe I'm not thinking of somebody, but Peyton and, and Jones Jr. look, they look uh, menacing. They look uh, pretty darn good. They they play explosive. They play fast. They just cut it loose every snap. Um, we'll see what that turns into, but I'm really encouraged. Uh, I I said we'll see on Marvin Jones Jr. You know I had heard some negative things through tour and duty in the beginning of, of camp. Um, clearly a light came on though, and that sucker that sucker looks good. I mean, he looks like what you were thinking you were going to get out of him coming out of high school. And Georgia misused him, and I'm glad he's here because he, he looks like he's going to be another in the long line of of uh, John Papuchis. He he's an elite through. athlete. Yeah, he is. He really that is. size and speed does not come by and very length, often. And length too. I mean, it just yeah. So uh, one there. thing one thing that I think is interesting is that everybody harps on more and more defensive tackles. What I saw was I thought you know Daryl Jackson looks good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't get to watch Tommy Wall too much, so I'll be curious to see if you can get anything out of him at, at defensive tackle in the near yeah. future. Yep. Um, yeah, Daniel Lyons stood out a couple of times. His length is is disruptive. You yeah. didn't have Josh Farmer. Yeah, right. um, I mean, in, in theory, you have four guys there that that could give you some reps. KJ Sampson. KJ some, Sampson. He made some plays. Good. Daniel Lyons flashed a couple times, but you need more there. Right, I, you would like more there, but I, I'm not like to me a wide receiver is, is a bigger need. Um, mm -hmm. But I agree. But I, I get it. I, I get the you can never have too many defensive tackles. And last year, you had a pretty elite defense because you could rotate so many defensive tackles. Correct. Um, yeah. So I, I'm not as worried about the defensive. I mean, the defensive line won today, so you know they looked good. Mm -hmm. Um. So moving on to the linebackers. <sighs> God. <laughs> <sighs> Omar Graham was out of position yeah. too many times. A couple times, yeah. Would have liked to have seen Sean Murphy make that tackle in the open in space. Um, Justin Cryer is what he is. I think there's some limited athleticism there, but sucker flies around. And he puts his head on the ball. Um, yep. Like Nicholson flashed, which is encouraging. He's been flashing more and more as camps go along here. I thought I thought DJ looked really good. I thought DJ yeah. played really well. And again, we'll have to go back and watch. I'm sure we'll find some times where he's out of position. But I, he, I was very happy with what I saw out of him. He looked athletic today. Yeah, um, he looked the most athletic that we've seen out of him. He he looks like, in my opinion, an upgrade on Tatum Bethu. So we'll see whether that holds true. Whether he plays up to that level come um, come uh, fall time. I'm going to say they can play better when the guys in front of them play better. Yeah. So the better you are on that front four, the better the, those two at that position are going to be. So, again, I think that's another reason for you to go out and get some more players there that you can count on to give you yeah. high-quality reps and snaps um, and to keep them clean. Do you have any different thoughts on linebacker? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought that Sean Murphy looked the part, but, I, I mean, I to be honest, the – whiff on the was it the lt touchdown yeah um, is standing out in my mind in a way that might not be fair for his overall performance mm -hmm. so we'll have to go back and watch that um yeah dj yeah looked good i i you have a room full of guys with potential but again this is kind of what we're saying we don't know we don't right. know you're hoping one of those you know three or four guys will step up and be yeah. serviceable for you um yeah. Cause you see, they don't, they don't really rotate that many linebackers. They didn't last year. No. Um, so you just need one guy. Um, that's yeah. going to be the dude there opposite DJ. Um, and I don't know. It, I I'm, I'm kind of cautious to, to say anything about Sean Murphy or, um, you know, yeah, I want to watch him. I don't pay that much attention to him in game. If I'm being completely honest. Right. Um, so the, the one bad play kind of stands out in my mind. And, and it's the same with Omar Graham. There's one bad play. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that happens. So yep. um, 
we'll have to we'll have to do the film review that's that's yeah. why we do it um okay so we talked about the corners already looks yes. good look quick quick safety thoughts safety thoughts um i didn't watch I, them at all i can't see them on tv so i i think they're i don't feel confident about the safety room if i'm honest um, okay I mean, we know what we get. We're getting with Shaheen Brown. <laughs> um, we know that uh, you know, you know, he's what he is. He's a rangy yeah. dude. Mm -hmm. He's he can be physical. Yeah, but I think he's a good player. Yeah, he's, he, he's a good player. He's a, he's a decent coverage safety. <sighs> Conrad Hussey is the guy that I think most people expect to be next to him day one. Conrad Hussey, you saw a lot of the same problems you saw at the end of last year. Mm -hmm. um, so he he's very athletic. He's very quick. Mm -hmm. He can be in the right place when he knows where he's going. I he's he, I think he's fine in coverage. Yeah, yeah, he's good in coverage. He's he'll get out of position, but he's. He's very hesitant to fill run lanes, is what I saw. Which there is crazy some... because everybody remembers him for that play where he blew that dude up on the. I think it was on the screen. But... It was a screen against Virginia Tech, but there was a couple plays, and we'll see him in the in the film review, where like everybody correctly spilled, which made the running back bounce the ball outside. Yeah, and you're hoping a safety's there, tackle within two to three yards. We're playing second and seven. Mm -hmm he was catching guys at like eight, nine yards. Yeah. Um, and, and he wasn't alone in that KJ, KJ Kirkland was also catching guys like yeah. outside of Shaheem. If it bounced the other direction, you were seeing, you know, uh, late reactions coming right. down. Um, so, uh, th there's no one standing out, um, as that number two guy. Uh, I thought Devonte Brown, was in position a few times. I'm curious to watch. I'm just curious to see that position. Watch it a little bit closer on film review. Um, maybe run it back a couple times and see if we can see what they're doing and get a better sense of what's going on there. I. It feels like a potential problem, but you also don't know like how much they're talking to them on the sideline. Like, hey, just stay deep right now. But nothing gets behind you. Be slow, filling on the run. Like. When you start game planning, and things things change, things change quickly. Um, but I would tend to agree with the little bit that I paid any attention to them today. Uh, that that second safety next to Shaheen Brown is a question mark right now. It was a it's been a question mark. It still may remain one. Um, yeah. I don't think that that's. I don't think that's anything crazy. Uh, all right, we've got a couple questions I want to get to before we get out of here. We've got fifteen hundred people uh, in this live between Twitter and um, YouTube, please be sure to like the video for us. If you can, if you're not subbed to the channels, get subbed to the channels. The first one is from grill master. Uh, he's just asked, how does this spring game compare to last year's? He thought it felt pretty similar. I don't know. I mean, I, I thought this team looked more physical. I think this team looks more physical and more explosive than last year. Um, I just don't think it looks better. But I think that there's time for it to get to to get to last year's group. Um, so I think they look more. I think they look faster, more explosive. I think they look more physical. They just don't look as deep to me. Yeah. Um, especially that front line on the, on the defense just doesn't look as deep and as talented as it did last year. And offensively, it's like, it's tough to say because you just got so many damn new pieces moving around out there and guys that have, they've got 14 practices together. Um, yeah. And yeah, obviously there's some other work that gets done on the side, but they've got 14, 14 opportunities to get together. And today was the 14th to get together and work together. Um, yeah. Yeah it's hard to put it all together in that kind of time frame. So the next four months are going to be crucial to, to, to their success. Um, so how does this game spring game feel in comparison to last worse, but 
that's TBD on whether it will be worse or not. Yeah, I think I said in the in the spring game preview essentially that mm-hmm. last year you, you had a finely order oiled machine on offense. You had yeah. Jordan Travis going into like his second, third year starting. You kind of had a lot of similar parts on the offensive line. You were just slotting in some wide receivers for explosives and mm-hmm. um it, it was smooth and like that the, they were working on fall install in the spring you know yeah. they, they were ahead of the curve yeah this time you see kind of typical stuff with spring games where things are a little disjointed uh like jet sweeps there was yeah false starts because like the timing's not there you're you weren't working with your number two quarterback who'd been getting most of the reps all spring um so yeah, it, it wasn't pretty mm. compared to last year, but there's a lot of positives. I, I think, mm-hmm. you know, we were going into this saying you might be in trouble because you don't have a pass rush. Well, I don't worry about that anymore. Marvin mm-hmm. Jones Jr. looks like he can be the guy, you know. Check that box. Um, how is Roydell, uh, well, how is Roydell going to look when he's, you know, behind this offensive line? He looked good. He looked patient. He found some holes. Mm-hmm. He's going to be someone who can grind you out games. I, he looks I think, like a better Treshawn Ward. Right. He, I think I think there's optimism here, but I think we can also come down to earth on DJ being a guy that's going to win a Heisman necessarily. He's he's a guy that your your offense is going to have to grind people down. You're going to have to be a physical team. You're yeah. going to have to lean on this defense and hopefully things hopefully things work out. Um but uh, I, I, I thought the offense looked a little bit less crisp, but I think the defense is in a better place right now than it was in spring game last year. Yeah, I would I would agree with that, I, especially at corner. I mean, even last year at corner, there was question marks. Like, nobody knew Jerion was going to have the year that he had. Like, yeah. that, was, that was a big question mark. Nickel for us last year was, like, the question mark about the defense. Like, what was it going to become? Um, so... And I yeah, hope I mean, I'm I, wrong. I hope this offense just balls out, you know, I mean, like that. balls out, balls out. That's not, it's not going to look the same. So balls out for the 2024 version is going to look different than what it did for the 2023 version. People maybe are going to forget how bogged down this offense got at times last year. Yeah, that's true. And I don't know if you're going to get that out of this group. Um, maybe DJ's going to miss a throw on a third down and they're in there, you know, you're not going to, keep the chains moving like uh, Jordan was able to. But I think you're going to hit some shot plays that you just aren't seeing yet because you're not setting that stuff up. So um, it doesn't look like there's a lot of other stuff in the chat. Uh, people, I guess, weren't being nitpicky. I, I thought we were pretty fair, pretty balanced overall. Um, That's the point of gonna... over analyzing a spring game if we're not going to nitpick everything, you know? <laughs> <Damn> instant <laughs> reaction. What the hell do you want from us? Um, I, I think we're going to call it there at 43 minutes, though. 1,600 people in, in here with us. Please be sure, again, to drop a like, drop a sub to the Knowles 24-7 and the X's and Knowles YouTube channels. Um, leave some comments in there because we always try to get back to people when they comment. Uh, it just helps us with the algorithm and getting this content out to people. Uh, we will be over on the Knowles 24-7 message boards. Uh, I know I'll be probably – Carrying the, carrying the uh, shield against Miami haters this uh, <laughs> next couple of days on on Twitter. So don't give them free space in your head, AB. No, they, those idiots can never they can never get in my head. Um, so we will see you guys out there. We appreciate you stopping in with us tonight after the spring showcase. Um, and if you are listening on the pod side, thank you very much. Leave a five star review if you can. Uh, and we will we will see you next time we get together. It's 